Today I'm going to show myself and anyone that wants to watch how to use frequency separation with the subtraction and addition to clean up any sort of blemishes on a person's face and have it deal with all the lighting changes automatically so you don't have to worry about where you're sampling from as far as the color goes. Um, let's do this from the beginning. Let me show you how it works. So let's, uh, we're basically, we're just starting with a normal 8-bit image. You can see up there, INT8. And for frequency separation, which is what we're doing to work, you need to be in 32-bit float. So here our bit depth is float 32. And from here on, we're going to be, first we'll be blurring the image with the blur. No, that was shift space to pull that up. Let's increase the blur. So, and let's see what we're doing. If you flick that over or just hit one, because of that little one indicator, you can see what, how much we're blurring. So the idea here is to get smooth color information to do our clone painting with. Now next, what we're gonna be doing is pulling up a channel booleans, BOL is the shortcut for that one. And we're gonna take, actually we'll take our original image throw that into here, and we're gonna use the operation subtract with the alpha doing nothing. And we're gonna actually be taking our blurred image and subtracting that from the original. So that's going to the foreground. And what that gives us is a high frequency area to work on. This is the details of the image, and it's the details that we're gonna be cloning. And we'll be stealing the a blurred version of the color for underneath but when we recombine them. So first thing, I'm gonna put these back together. They were subtracted apart. Let's put them back together with one more channel booleans, B-O-L. And in here, instead of saying operation subtract, this time we'll do add, alpha do nothing. And the order that these go in doesn't matter because addition can go either way. And so we're back to where we started from. But because we have these separated out now, let me option drag across to uh, to split that off to the side. Because these are split off now, now I can paint with just the texture of this high frequency. So if I hit shift space to pull up the paint tool, we can start working on some blemishes. But it's kind of hard to see here in this mode, so I will actually look at the final result to see how this is, is all painting out. So I'm gonna just look over here. I'm using command mouse wheel to really zoom on, in on parts. And with the paint tool, I'm gonna to change to stroke. So it'll basically paint on all frames. And over here we have clone, which is obviously it's gonna be cloning. So this is just like Photoshop. If you option click the area we're gonna steal the texture from, and then you can paint the texture right there and combine that with the color. So this is great because it steals the color from the blur underneath. Same thing from over here, option click paint. Let's see where there's a blemish on his nose right there. See that one didn't work quite as well because the texture what didn't quite match. So what if we pull texture from like here? That was a little better. I like that better. Same thing over here. That's not really a blemish but let's look at his forehead and yeah, we got some stuff we can take care of. If we want to increase the size of the, the brush it's just a command. Hold down command with dragging so you don't have to go over to the inspector or anything like that. And then this is a really nice way to not have to worry about the color so much and just make sure your textures are matching because that blur is getting all that color information already for you. So you can see this would work really great with a moving image too. The only thing with a moving image, you would need to track these in. So, and that's totally doable. It's just, it would make this tutorial about minus and plus longer than I wanted it to be today. So this is what you get for me today. Um, yeah, I think that's that, that'll do for now. So here's our final results. And here's our before. And here's another thing that's cool in Fusion. You can load different buffers, these A and B buffers. So by default, if you hit the the command and comma keys if I switch this to the B buffer now I have a spot that I can put my after in and if I push the one that's right next to it the the slash key next to shift and I click in here I get this little split command option lets me click anywhere in here 
So I can see what I've what I've changed by just like wiping the difference in there. So command option lets me sort of see that 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 cleanup that I did. So maybe maybe that's not perfect, but honestly, when that's zoomed all the way out, no one's gonna know. I think I think we're in pretty good shape. So that's the after, or that's the, sorry that was the before. Here's the after from this channel booleans down here. And then obviously this would go to media out if you're in Resolve. Um, you could go to a saver or something like that. And so that's it. Uh, we got to change bit depth to 32 bit float. We're going to subtract a blurred version from the original. We're going to paint on the high frequency area, the detailed area, and then we'll recombine it down here with an addition. And that gives us a nice clean image.